Welcome to Transfiguration in Oakdale. This is our podcast. You are listening to Justin Cordham, Director of Parish Formation, and our Associate Pastor, Father Brian Lynch. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good to, good to be talking to you. So today, well, uh, our pastor's out. Any updates on that? Any uh, fun Fun things. Our pastor is well. You don't know, basking in the sun somewhere, maybe. I, yeah, I, I, um, I have nothing really to offer in that regard. I've been so you know I, yeah, I've been I've been the the priest here this weekend, and it certainly uh, gives me an insight into some of the the challenges that that the the pastor faces on a, a daily and and weekly basis, and so. Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be grateful. I'll be one of the happiest people to see him back. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll be happy when he's back. Just because you missed him so much. Um, you know, I'm not missing is hard for me. I, I don't. I uh, this is uh, this is a really. I had an experience when I was seven. Yeah, that's a that's a sensitive time. It, age. Yeah, you know, that's a sensitive it, age. It is. It yeah. really is. So and yeah, it can it can have ramifications for it, the rest of our lives it, yeah they it, it, it has it, so father we we may not miss you but we love you maybe um i'll be <laughs> well yeah i don't uh yeah i'll be i'll be i'll be happy to see him so maybe that is missing maybe that's sure. something close to missing it's close I think you're getting there. Wow. Okay. This is a revelation. I'm, you are hearing this first. This is firsthand. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm a work in progress. Yeah, we all are, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, sometimes better than others. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Today is a Jesus Friday. These Woo. podcasts are going to be... Uh, actually, I'm moving the podcast date to come out either on a Monday or a Friday. This week's came out on a Friday. Oh. So I'm going to test that. And so next week's going to come out on a Friday as well. Okay. And I kind of want to just see if we get more traction on a different day sure. or not. I don't know if people listen to podcasts on Sundays. The reason we put them out on Sundays originally was because that's when we get the most traffic on our YouTube page. Sure. So, yeah, we'll see. Okay. Um, Last week we talked a little bit about communications. We we said don't share this podcast, but actually talk to your neighbor about Jesus oh, if you're going to sure. prioritize something. Yeah, I do encourage you to share podcasts, but you know it's probably a bigger priority to uh, get the gumption or the courage to actually talk to your neighbor and you know get to know them and then talk to them about Jesus and whatnot. So yeah. ask them if there's anything you can pray for them about this week or next week. Talk to your family about Jesus. Invite them back to church. Sharing the podcast can feel like we're checking off like this. I did a Christian thing and I shared Jesus today, but it's probably the 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 not so best option of actually sharing Jesus. Yeah. And it's easy to just check it off a box and say, I'm good. I don't need to do that anymore. Uh, but talk to yeah. someone yeah i know i i think there's there's there's, there's a lot there i think uh, I, I had a conversation earlier today it, it reminds me of that conversation i think you know maybe in um maybe in it is i think you, you send a link to something or share a podcast and then you kind of like uh, wash your hands of it and but you know, I, I think to to really to to listen attentively to the podcast to maybe maybe zero in on five or ten minutes that's especially relevant and and say, hey, you know, what, as you're sharing, you know, I listened to listen. I I, I enjoy this. I uh, I hope you'll consider listening to you know minute five through ten, and and I'd love to 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 talk to you about what you think about it and. Uh, you know, kind of do some of the the editing, the the gives give give the people help. I mean, probably very few people are, um, you know, are, are just come looking for something to do. I can't think of anything to do. What am I gonna, you know, so to help them to use their time efficiently and well. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I think we can do some of that too. yeah to tell people you found some value in something is good i found value in these five minutes listen to minute 
10 through 15 or something. Yeah, and let's talk about it. Yeah, you know, or and let's talk about it. Great. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. not just, you know, hey, listen to this. Yeah. Yeah, I listen to podcasts while I'm biking or running. Usually biking, it's, I don't know why, my brain works differently while I'm biking what, as opposed to running. Running, I can listen to audiobooks. Biking, I cannot for some reason. My brain just can't wander enough sure. during biking. I think it's maybe a little more intensive for my brain. I don't know if it's just a balance thing or what. It'd be yeah. interesting to find out. But podcasts and uh, informative stuff is, for some reason, easier to listen to. So podcasts are my biking thing or driving. Driving is I can listen to podcasts easier. So you can send it to someone else and invite them to listen while they're driving to work or whatever else or taking a walk. Yeah. Sometimes my brain wanders too much when I'm not listening to anything and wanders into, you know, rehashing the day a little too much. So sure. sometimes it's nice to listen to something else. So find some value here today. Today we're going to talk about the Shroud of Turin. Yes. Am I saying all of that right? I, I think, think so. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So right now Transfiguration has a replica that is similar in size, right, Father? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll just give a teeny little introduction. We received a replica from uh, an employee, a former employee of 3M who worked in Italy, and they were helping the, the people that are working with the Shroud to create an image for them. And they created an image, and when it was finished, they were done with their work. This, you know, they were kind of giving it away, I guess. And someone who worked there received it, shipped it back, and it is in this beautiful case that Phil made even nicer. And it's got some beautiful lights behind it, so it is in our what we're calling what we call the Elijah Gallery. And it's got some nice lights behind it, and it's going to have a little plaque next to it soon that's going to describe some of those things. But Father has Father, you're kind of like a what would you call yourself? A fan enthusiast. of the shroud or enthusiast? Enth- enthusiast, I think, is the is the word that I that I'm settling on. Yeah, yeah. So most people, I think, uh, most people want to know: is it real, or you know, what is it? How is it yeah. made? Those type. That's probably the biggest curiosity of yeah. people. But also, if you can just give an, a description of what we have here yeah. at Transfiguration, that'd be great to hear too. So you know, what does that mean? Is it real? Well, the so the original, uh, sh- the the original the what we call the the shroud of of Turin in in English and in, in the United States is it is a religious artifact. That much we can certainly say it is a religious artifact about um, fourteen feet long and I think about four feet wide probably. And it is um, it is kept in the the Basilica in Turin, Italy, and it, it belongs to the Vatican now. And so its name is certainly related to to where it now resides. The shroud. The reason it's called the shroud is that it is purported to be the 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 burial shroud of Jesus. So the 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 shroud, the the burial cloths of Jesus are mentioned in all four gospels, provided by Joseph of Arimathea. Those of us who pray the the stations will recognize him from the the fourteenth station, I believe, the very last station. And so Joseph provided these burial cloths. It's it's given in in each of the gospels, all four gospels. So that's pretty significant in itself. The um, in Luke and John, they are they are mentioned as part of the resurrection story. So all of them mention the cloth prior to burial, and Luke and John mention them afterwards as sort of evidence in the empty tomb of the resurrection. And John is particularly 
strong. The implication is that there's something about the way the 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 shroud is arranged there that encourages faith in Jesus uh, in in the author in in John the beloved disciple however we want to refer to him so when when we when when somebody asks is it real almost universally what they're asking it is that cloth in that we call the shroud of turin is that the very same cloth that Joseph of Arimathea provided for the burial of Jesus and then was subsequently found in the empty tomb on that very first Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And this is where there's a, a great deal of debate and uh, disagreement about what whether it is in fact the 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 burial cl- the biblical artifact from the burial and resurrection of Jesus the church has never said definitively you know the church the church holds it to be certainly an an artifact and a significant one it's treated more significantly Perhaps than any other artifact, it's it's secured in, in, in such a way that is it's not even on it's not even on display permanently because th- there's a desire to preserve it for for as long as possible, not subjecting it to elements and all. I believe it's encased in an inert gas mm. that uh, helps to protect the the surface from reacting with oxygen so it's it's an oxygen free environment so that it's not you know we're all probably familiar with with paper and and cloth aging in various ways turning yellow things like that so they're trying to prevent that from happening and they're trying to we're probably some of us at least familiar with putting out um putting out uh on cloth on a on a on a uh on a clothesline to bleach it even, you know, there, so, so no, no oxygen, no sunlight trying to preserve it. it so it, it's, it's extremely highly regarded by the Vatican. At the very least, it is an icon. It is at the very least, it is an extremely mysterious icon that gives an image of the a person who appears to be Jesus if we if we look at the description of Jesus from his passion especially because the 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 image on on the shroud of Turin is is a full body image of a, of a man who has Holes, he has bleeding wounds in his wrists, and he has wounds with 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 blood on all over his body, his back, his legs. He has he has a wound in his side, reminiscent of the of the 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 wound from his from the lance that was thrust into his side and that has blood on it and also in his head he has wounds that are reminiscent of the crown of thorns so the um the image is is of of the front and back of of a, of a man uh his his arms are 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 crossed over his waist basically so it's an extraordinary full body image front and back because the cloth was uh you know it's 14 feet long let's say he's he's you know basically six feet tall and so 
he he he's laying on top of one half and then it's folded over his head and it's and then the other half is lying across the um his his front side so those both of those images front and back to me the most interesting and mysterious quality of it is that the image on the shroud is a, is a photographic negative and the, the unfortunately younger people might not know what a photographic negative is <laughs> so what do you mean that's like when you uh, you can i think you can still do a filter of a photographic negative on your phone yeah but it's yeah it comes from so, actual film yeah so even when i was young alive in my lifetime cameras used to have film and film was uh basically a a a a sheet of plastic something like tape is a sheet of plastic but on that uh or in or on that plastic was a light sensitive material usually made out of some silver compounds and when light hits that it goes from being uh, in sort of invisible clear to dark black. So in the good old days, even when I worked at 3M in, in some technologies that still used film, we had a dark room. You had to you had to when you when you took a photograph, the, the film, the 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 camera is essentially an airtight container airtight well light proof container that's completely dark and when you press the button it exposes it allows light in for a very short amount of time and that so that light is hitting is striking that light sensitive material and the the greater the intensity of light or the more light is a produces a darker spot and the and the less light produces a a lighter less dark spot and so you've got you've the the result is um is is a photographic negative where where light has become dark on the film so you need to take that film into a dark room because if you took it out in in the regular room that's illuminated it would the all the film would turn black. So you have to take it into a dark room and develop it. And that fixes so you're in this dark room and you're you're then you're you're putting the film into a chemical that's going to fix it and make it the case that it can be exposed to light and it's not going to become completely dark it, it captures the image that um it captures the image as the ca- the the camera had had captured it and preserves it and so um the um the, the the extraordinary thing about the shroud is that the image on the shroud is a photographic negative. But photography was only developed in the 1800s. And so whenever you see a, a photograph, it's, it's not before 1800. There's no way it didn't exist. Photography didn't exist. But the shroud clearly existed before 1800 i believe i believe the the earliest sort of documentary evidence of the very that is certainly the the same piece of cloth currently in turn is from about 1250 ad so even conservatively we say that we know that this cloth that currently has a photographic ne- negative image on it 
it existed 500 years before photography existed. How could anyone conceive of making a photographic negative before the technology existed and and the re where, where this became where, where this was discovered of course is when a, a fella uh, a, an Italian photographer by the name of Segundo Pia he was given the the uh, really the, um, the the privilege of, of of taking the first photographs of the Shroud of Turin. You know, as I said, it's not just it's just not hanging out there for for people to visit like a regular museum and take photos. It it, it it's it's taken out of storage and put on display. And so, in the I think it was uh, 1898 when there was there's these periodic times where. It will be it will be taken out and people are allowed to see it. So in in 1898 was one of these occasions. It was probably celebrating some event. Can't remember what it, the event was, but um, it was taken out and he was given the opportunity to photograph. And again, it was not you know we're so it's so hard for us to understand. Taking a photograph back then was a big production. I mean, it was the equipment was enormous, certainly compared to what we had. It, the, the the time of exposure would would be i think minutes you know measured in fractions of hours sometimes not just a, you know just not just instantaneous so so Ganopi, uh you know he he sets up this all this equipment he, you know he, he, again it's so hard to explain like even when i was a kid we need these crazy bright lights to take photographs and 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 so he's got all he's got to set up all this lighting and 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 all this equipment and so he, and he's got to take the photo and he takes the photo he goes to the dark room to to develop fix whatever the proper word is the the image and because the camera captures a negative and the shroud itself is a negative he ends up with a positive, which is the first time that anyone had seen with the, the, the image on the shroud, the, the dark and the light reversed proportionally. So Segundo Pio is looking at what looks to be a photograph of Jesus, not his negative, but his <clears throat> an actual photograph of uh, black and white admittedly because that's only the technology yeah i have one of those in my office yeah yeah and you've probably seen it but it, it's it's an, it's extraordinary and and so the, the it's only discovered in in 1898 that the the shroud has this the image on the shroud has this remarkable quality that it it it's 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 very difficult to know how anyone could have anticipated that photography would exist and and that the way it would work and so it's an incredible feature I, to me it's probably the 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 most significant and and convincing feature more or less in in broad in broad strokes but and there's there's so many other incredible uh, historical features of the shroud. You know, prior to prior to the shroud and uh, and the studies of the shroud, the conventional Christian art showed um, the wounds in the hands of Jesus are are in his, the palms of his hands. Probably most crucifixes any of you are have continue to have this representation but from studies um and uh, of the shroud that the it's it's evident it's obvious it's clear that the 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 wounds are in his wrists you know and why is that i mean why would why would an image that someone fabricated not necessarily with with bad intentions but um, why would it, an artist or or, or somebody, it, but prior to 1250 AD, put 
the wounds in his wrists, which goes completely against tradition in almost every conventional image of the crucifixion. Why would he put it in the wrists instead of in the hands? Well, it's it's probably not shocking to you if you think about it that a nail through the palm uh, is not going to support the weight of a hanging body. However, if your job is to crucify people and you've been doing it for more than a couple of days, you figure out that if you really want this to work, you got to find a load-bearing joint that some some solid mass of, of bone that you can drive this nail into so that it will support the weight of a hanging body. And that's in fact what the 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 nail in the wrist accomplishes. It allows the 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 um the the it allows the that wound the the body to hang from those wounds and support the weight of the body. So Yeah, you have to do it kind of right in between the ulna and the radius and it hangs. You can yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't I can't remember the uh, there's there's some some obviously like there's all these medical terms for our bones and stuff and and uh but yeah and then and then and uh, again it's like so they anticipate again how did how would could somebody anticipate that um if they were an artist and then you know this is maybe not as certain but when you look at the hands on the shroud the the thumbs are not evident though though some of the fingers it seems to me are extraordinarily well defined but the thumbs are not evident and what i know i've read and i think is the case that when you drive a nail into that space it causes the thumb the natural consequence is for the thumb to retract Mm -hmm. into the behind the fingers so that Mm -hmm. it's not so that is sort of a Again, what with medical studies, if you do that, you find that the nail, you know, what, the the thumbs would have would have uh, contracted and would be obscured from mm. from sight by the by the by the rest of the hand. So um, there's there's sort of just one after another extraordinary. And there's there's also the some there's also blood. On the shroud, yeah. Too, right? So yeah, no, it's 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 just it just it's just fascination after fascination. So like real blood, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Not, re- not just looks like blood. Yeah, but they've been tested. It's real blood. Real real blood, and um. So the body image is a photographic negative, <laughs> but all of the blood images are are photographic positives. <laughs> So again, it just it's just uh yeah, so the 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 blood is 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 human blood and there's there's some debate about types and all. I'm not sure that that really ends up being all that significant because we don't know what Jesus's blood type was presumably. But yeah, the the um the um there there's all kind there's there's all kinds of additional information that can be gleaned from the the blood stains on the shroud including people have used the the um you can see sort of what we might call rivulets of blood flowing down the arms of Jesus and they've used the angle you know presumably these are these are flowing under the the under uh, gravity, the pull of gravity. So people have used that the 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 direction, the angle of the of those rivulets of blood to calculate. You know the angle that he must have been hanging on. His arms must have been hanging on on the cross. And um, um, yeah, and then it's the case too that um. The 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 body image is um is it is it superficial in the best sense of the word. It, it's literally superficial. It's like it does not penetrate the cloth. It's on the absolute the the the, the linen fibers are composed of a like let's say a hundred or so 
individual smaller fibers. The the threads of linen are twisted combination of let's say a hundred fibers. Well, only the top, only the top tiny fibers are discolored, and in places where the blood is present, the image is not present underneath the 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 body image the photographic negative body image is not present underneath the blood the implication being that of course in crucifixion the the blood images despite common sense if you were sort of painting such a thing which is clearly not the case it's not a painting but if you were painting such a thing it's com- the complete opposite of what you do. The, the blood images were put down first, and then the body image was put down subsequently, right? Because if, if you got the blood down first, then you're not, you don't get to put the image underneath, right? In, in the, when applied to the Passion, Death, and Resurrection, the presumption is that, of course, the blood image is a consequence of the crucifixion and, and being laid in the tomb on the cloth, but... The body image is a consequence of the resurrection when there's some burst of energy that, you know, not so different than some of these photography principles we'd be talking about. That Yeah, I like that image that the light creates the image. You yeah. Know, this, this burst of energy or light created this image on the the cloth i think it's 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 very interesting that in the in and also you know in the darkness of this tomb this light created an image on the cloth it's it's yeah yeah i, and, I never thought about that before i i i heard the story of all the you know the negative and the development and how he's looking at it and all of a sudden just wow can jesus's face mm-hmm. or this image of a man kind of pops out at him yep. more so because if you look at the shroud right now even at transfiguration it's you you kind of have to look hard to it's see subtle. a face you yeah. know it's very subtle it's not it's not black and white you know it's it's kind of like a a light brown color yeah and you you kind of have to look hard yeah. to see like oh that's where a face would be in the yeah. back and the head and, and the legs and, and stuff and yeah it's just to wrap up that point so the the you know the the bloods on the shroud uh, be, as a consequence of the the, the crucifixion and then sort of the uh, a reason to, for the for the image of the the body to not be underneath the blood is that in the blood some way prevented that light. For that the burst of maybe not the energy what that accompanied the resurrection that the blood present on the shroud sort of masked or shielded the the image from imprinting you know un- underneath so um and the blood is throughout it's like in the fibers too right as opposed to the image yeah the, the, the blood is actually in the fibers yeah the, and the image is like you said on the top of the very yeah. top of the shroud. So, so yeah so we'd say that the blood i think you know so we'd say the blood is a foreign substance it's it's added to the shroud whereas the um the body image is is a discoloration of the shroud. It's not additional material, but it's a. Yeah. And then, oh, and that's oh, what I was yeah. going to get at. And then, so for the body image, which is different than the blood image, the body image, the the density of the image is a, is an enormous issue because, um, as as we said, the um the the image on the shroud itself is rather subtle. And that's because that's a, a consequence of, of we might say the density of the image is 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 such that when you when you stand at a dis a certain di- I'm moving away from the microphone we stand away at a certain distance of I think it's about I think at least well the further away up to a point will be better so when you get further away you can see you know when you're about 10 feet away you can see the image the the contrast and the the density of the 
image work in such a way that you can see it from about 10 feet. But if you move up to one foot of the image, it, it's it's almost you can't see it. Because it's not, it's too light. I don't know. I don't have all the words, but it, so. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's harder to see the contour. Yeah. It's really hard to see kind of the makeup of it because you're, you're not taking in the whole thing. When you're too close, yeah. you can only take in parts and the parts are just not as dense yeah. to distinguish from the rest of the cloth. Yes. that Yes. And I'm so, sure there's some type of scientific reasoning behind that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And the and the um, you know the the um, what what people have said when when people have argued, no, this is a this is a this is an artistic production by a by a, by a human being. Well, the one of the many arguments against this is that um, well, this artist would need like a a, a three, maybe even six foot long paintbrush or pen because you can't you can't see well enough unless you're at that distance to to make the 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 image properly so um yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a marvel do we want to talk about the 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 reasons that the the biggest reason that people are skeptical sure I mean, let's I guess talk we about have it all. To be, we have to be honest. So, the the big, uh, like the aging, is that what you're getting at? Yeah, the carbon dating. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so carbon dating has been the big uh, piece of evidence against the this being the the same artifact mentioned in in the in all four gospels. Uh, the 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 carb there was uh, there was carbon dating done by three reputable laboratories so the the carbon dating is based on that there's different kinds of carbon and 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 it's it's based the the, the different kinds of carbon are are named after the number of uh, particles in the nucleus. So all carbon has six protons, but it can have a different number of neutrons, right? So the, the classic is would sort of be carbon 12, where the, the protons and the neutrons are the same number. But you can have as many, I don't know how, as, you might have a, more or less, but I know you can have, there's a version of it that's called carbon 14 that has uh, eight neutrons. And carbon fourteen is 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 present at any given time in a certain amount, right? So a certain fraction of all carbon will be will be uh, carbon fourteen at any one point in time in uh, organic thing in, in materials that are are sort of exchanging and in taking in carbon. It will it will be a constant, but then when um, when a thing dies and it's no longer taking in carbon, that the amount of carbon fourteen it can't it can't. Um, well, I have to stop. It, carbon fourteen <laughs> it um, it decays. It's not so. It the amount of of carbon fourteen. At any one uh, given time, uh, it decreases with time. And with these radioactive, so this is a radioactive material, and and so for for a radioactive material, th- we give these materials something called a half life. And um, so radioactive materials break down into. Uh, uh, two or more smaller particles and so carbon 14 is gonna is gonna break down into let presumably carbon 12 and a, and, a, and a couple of uh, neutrons let's say for radioactive materials we give them a half life that's the that's the amount of time that it takes for half of the carbon 14 to turn into carbon 12 
half of the yeah. So because of this, because we know the half life of 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 carbon fourteen, we can measure the amount of carbon fourteen in the substance and uh, and determine when the thing died, basically. The thing being like, you know, if you have the paper, plant. the plant, you know, like if the you have plant. A, a plant that's creating another product, yep. like you have a, a wood desk, you can you can say basically like when that tree got chopped down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When it, yes. It, it, it had, as it's living it, there's an equilibrium that's established. It, 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 it's taking in carbon. It's, it's presumably giving off carbon. Uh, yeah. So, um, but then when it dies, that whole process stops. So you can measure the age. And um, when when these three uh, laboratories return their results, it, the the uh, they said that their their tests indicated that the material that they tested was the 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 number that keeps coming to your mind is 1280 AD. Yeah, something like that. 1280 AD. They always give a range. Yeah. Yeah. So I think 1280 may have been the lower end. But anyhow, it's 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 hundreds of years um after the New Testament. So that has been considered the the biggest argument against the um the this still significant religious artifact that is the most significant image of Jesus in the world uh and regardless of of the date it's it's still that but that would be the argument against this most significant image of Jesus in the world not being the same cloth that's described in the gospel. Yeah, what are some, I mean, I have some, exp, there's some explanations I've heard around yeah. that, some of them yep. being that they only got to work with a very small portion yeah. of the shroud itself. And, yep. and that explanation is that with some of those portions, they're, you're just not getting a full picture. Yeah. And the second, you know, significant to, to me is I'm not sure I'm not sure you can get a valid carbon dating on something that I would I would think is is a, is miraculous. If it's miraculous, sure. it's it's probably going to age differently. Any and then and then even then we still don't have this understanding of a, a negative image for another 500 years after this is supposedly, you know, has occurred. So yeah. there's, there's, and they've done tons of tests on the thing. And, and most significantly, they have found no way that it was, had, that it was created. Yeah. They we, know for sure that it, this was not a painting. There's yeah. not, there's definitively, this is not a painting. It, it couldn't have been a masterpiece by Michelangelo or something. I've heard some crazy stuff like no. that. Yeah. Yeah. The best, the best theoretical explanation of it being a, a human artifact that I've heard is that some, some genius like uh, Da Vinci Act, you know, the, 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 clearly it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gene. It would, it would require a genius, somebody who is, you know, drawing helicopters the way that he did, but that he had actually, um, been able to figure out photography and just didn't tell anyone or something. Sure. Which, or didn't have the resources to develop it or yeah. into something further. It's yeah. like, okay, whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Is- but I mean that, yeah, that, that seems a bit of a, a stretch. Um, so yeah, so. So the carbon, the carbon fourteen dating. There's been lots of so we're, we've 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 sort of taken two different tracks here. There's there's the critique of the the carbon fourteen dating itself, and then there's comparing all of the other sort of mountains of evidence and tests and disciplines that have used been used to date it to an earlier date than what the carbon fourteen date has given. The you know I think it would be it would be difficult to cover all of the the um all of the the different ways that the the date might not 
accurately reflect the the uh, the date of of the shroud itself. But one thing we can say with absolute certainty is that when the when the team of scientists um, were planning to do the testing, they recognized that. Uh, I think they thought that seven, you know, there, again, it's so difficult because you, this is a destructive test. So some, some tests are not destructive and they don't destroy the sample and some tests are and, and carbon-14 is a destructive test. So you want, because it's such a valuable artifact, you want to limit the amount that you destroy. So they thought, I think they thought, you know, ideally you'd, you'd You'd te- you'd have a million samples, but that you can't under the circumstances. So, I think they thought that seven or so would be good, and that there would be they they came up with all these these very I think sound uh, this sound design experiment that was going to have seven or so samples using seven different laboratories with 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 sort of blind testing, and there would be all of this. Uh, um, sort of uh, all these all these steps made that it would be sampled from different parts of the cloth, not uh, not just one section of the cloth. Well, as probably it's not foreign to many of us, we have these great plans. We're going to do this thing perfectly. Well, then when it actually came, when it the ex, the experiment came to be done, they they had uh, probably a combination of of uh, uh, a very practical, probably too many cooks in the kitchen. Probably, probably, uh, probably somebody who was very protective of the shroud said, "No, you're not ch- chopping it up in all these pieces." So they did a very different version of the test that seems to have have tested really essentially one section of the shroud that was on the fringe and and where it, it would have been. Uh, handled by by people for 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 the first thousand years or so of his existence and um potentially contaminated and so the 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 short my my basic point being that the test that was designed to uh to give a, a really confident date by carbon dating that that plan was was uh, was scrapped and abandoned for uh, another plan that um, that clearly has a lot of problems with sampling and um, and contamination and and things like that. Yeah, if people, yeah, you can see the pictures of even the the little chunk that they took out for the for the carbon dating, and you can um, where where's a good resource to learn more about this you know i think for i mean we just can't cover it all obviously no i think experts that have studied this for decades now yeah and 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 so yeah so you know i think for our audience um go on formed forms got a few videos that are you know i think they'll that'll get you started that'll get that's an easy way make it a um you know when after you're done watching the chosen you know pop bring up your uh bring up your forms and uh there you go and 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 watch a couple i think there's at least two maybe four maybe more documentaries on the shroud and uh that'll that'll get you, that'll introduce you to some of the personalities there's some real personalities and they have who's your favorite you got a favorite um i you know i guess i guess um probably dr jackson not from a uh, um not from a um a entertainment value personality but just his his uh Dr. Jackson is just so um he's so devoted and he he j- clearly loves Jesus very much and and wants to I mean uh, he's made some outrageous claims I think that I think he's backtracked on but I mean he, he re- He's a he's a scientist and clearly he's trained, but he really wants this to be real. Oh yeah, <laughs> he really wants this to be the real thing, uh, and I do too. But um, it, it gets confusing, right? Because as a scientist, you're you're not, I you know maybe this isn't 
even human, but you're not like supposed to want it to be. Yeah. A certain way. You kind of have to be detached from <laughs> yeah. the results because otherwise you will maybe purposely skew them yeah. to give you what you yeah, want. Yeah, and I think he's yeah. probably discovered for himself that his ideas have caused him to say some things that are um are kind of kind of, you know, kind of out there. But yeah, I mean he, he the, that this he he really has just given seems like he's just given his life to it. So Yeah, I've watched a couple of what's his name? Barry Barry Schwartz. Barry Schwartz. <laughs> yeah. So he's a Jewish yeah. man that yeah. was called on as a photographer to yes. study the shroud maybe 30 years ago now. Oh gosh. Maybe the, 40, the original wow. Stir project was uh 1978. Seven? Okay. Yeah, so 40 so, yeah, years ago. Cool. And, yeah, he came in a total skeptic. Yeah. I mean, a complete skeptic. And he, he wasn't even Jewish at the time. I mean, grew up Jewish but wasn't living it, his faith at all. And he's, like, totally convinced this this is real. I mean, he's totally convinced that it, it's not man-made. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's just, he's just like, no, there's no way this is man-made. We can't find anything that we can actually test that yeah. shows us – you know anything definitively that it was man made yeah here here's evidence that 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 mr schwartz is a is a is a character he, yeah he's he, kind of he, goofy <laughs> he's um so the one of the most recent books uh with with a, tw- a 2021 uh copyright date is called a catholic scientist champions the shroud of turin and um this book is um I found it to be very unsatisfying, and I, and I. But I, to be fair, I've read a lot of books on the shroud. But yeah, it, it's 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 almost annoying at times. He has this sort of constant refrain that says he he ends chapter he ends eight of his chapters with this same refrain. We must come to the conclusion that science does not have the last word when it comes to the shroud of Turin. I mean, it, it's so repetitive that it, it's kind of annoying. But he, and he, but he ends his whole book with a quote from Barry Schwartz's mom. Oh yeah, this I is think the, I heard this, this is the very last paragraph. It says, he says, "Let's close with this." When Barry Schwartz, the famous photographer of the Sturp team, that's the Shroud of Turin Research Project. Asked his Jewish mother whether she thought the shroud was authentic, she simply said to him, Barry, of course, is authentic. They wouldn't have kept it for 2,000 years if it wasn't. <laughs> so I don't know how to explain all the logical fallacy there. I don't have all the wor- the words. But, um, yeah, it, there's some... there's. Uh, it's it's a it, you know and I would as people are probably tired of me saying that I was a scientist before I was a priest I'm tired of it to be honest but I was and um, it's you know it's a fascinating intersection of science and religion there's just I don't think there's yeah. anything else like oh it. yeah we could talk for hours about the blood on it and how it's still red. And the scientists that say, oh, it's because of the Billy Rubin and Jesus is under stress and yeah. all. I mean, there's so much stuff. It's really fascinating. I, I'm yeah. fascinated because I'm a former scientist as well. I didn't work as long as, as Father Lynch did in the field, but it is, yeah, there's so much cool stuff. And just the way they tested it in some ways is just fascinating how they tested to see if it was a fat- photograph or if it was a painting or if it was all these other kind of fancy you know ways they could have created it and it's yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool so i yeah watch those episodes on on form if you don't have form you got to get form yeah it's free you got to get form. Sakes. sign up for form go to our website and sign up for forms and and th- that is uh that is just a, an inexhaustible resource of fantastic catholic inexhaustible is probably accurate it's unbelievable there's so much stuff on there it's it's incredible it's almost it's almost too much you want to just uh you know talk to people about jesus instead of watching jesus shows but yeah yeah, that's okay yeah any shout outs this week father you got any shout outs for shroud people or anyone yeah you you think might be listening Um, yeah you know um uh, Pete and Mary, shout out to Pete and Mary. Pete and Mary, Pete and Mary. I think uh, they they know something about uh, this topic, and uh, so 
Yeah. Shout out to Pete and Mary. Shout out. Uh, it's Teresa's birthday today, oh, so yeah. I got to get going. I got to get her McDonald's for lunch today. And and Justin hates the the traditional happy birthday song, so please don't please don't yeah. sing that. Yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, well, I won't get into it. We'll get hate mail. Yeah, um, that'll be another podcast. Yeah, I just don't. And I don't. We'll do that podcast for a rival church. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, thanks for listening today. We hope that you can come see the the replica that we have here at Transfiguration. You can p- pray in front of it. As Father said, it, it, you know, at the very least, it's an icon. Yeah, it's the very to, least. At the very least, it's the most significant image of Jesus in in human history. At best, it is the most significant relic in human history. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's it's, I mean, it's the relic of relics. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the true the, cross the crown, is uh, or crown the of crown thorns. of thorns. Yeah. I mean, those would be the same. But this would even have to give way. This is the this is evidence. This is this is a pre, this is present at the crucifixion, uh, basically at the 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 crucifix, the blood of the crucifixion, you know, at, and, and the resurrection. So, this is yeah. why this is why we believe Jesus is real. I yeah. mean, not because of this shroud, of no. course, but because of eyewitnesses. But yeah. this is another witness, a testimony. The to Silent us as well. Witness. That is yeah. one of the, the the early great books. That's a great book, The Silent Witness. Yeah, that's that's a book on the shroud. Book on the shroud. Yeah. Yeah. Silent cool. Witness. Well, thanks for joining us, Father Lynch. As always, Transfiguration exists to lead all those in the East Metro to Christ, the source and summit of our daily and eternal lives. So go talk to someone about Jesus today. God bless.